Okay, so once you've observed the process and broken down the different tasks into work elements, you want to label each element by what type it is. This is important because different types of elements factor into the equation differently. Okay, first, we have a repetitive element. A repetitive element is one that is done repeatedly through each cycle. An example of this would be a cashier greeting each customer in line. An example of an occasional element is the cashier giving cash back to the customer, seen as customers only occasionally ask for it. A constant work element is one with little variation between cycles, whereas a variable element is one that is liable to vary from cycle to cycle. A manual work element is basically anything that is done by hand. Delay elements are unneeded and should ideally be eliminated from the process. An example of a machine element is a CNC machine that runs the same exact process each cycle. A governing element um, is the largest element in a concurrent cycle. An example of this would be boiling water for coffee. While you can set up uh, cups and everything else, sugar that you need for the coffee, you're still going to have to wait on the water to boil. A foreign element is one that is not expected to be in the study, such as a machine breaking down. An internal element is performed by the operator during the machine cycle time and doesn't factor into the overall cycle time. Whereas an external element is performed outside the machine cycle time and does, over, and does affect overall cycle time. Another way to classify work elements is by labeling the elements either value added, non-value added but necessary, and non-value added waste. Starting from the top, value added is anything that directly works towards molding the final product. On top of this, um, it must be done right the first time, otherwise it would be waste, and the customer must want it. Non-value added but necessary is a little bit more confusing sometimes to people, but I think a good example of this <clears throat> concept is um, paying employees. And what I mean by this is while paying employees is important and necessary because without employees, uh, nothing would ever be manufactured, yeah, this is kind of an indirect means to the end, uh, whereas the actual work that the employees do would be the value added. Non-value added waste is a little bit more straightforward. It is um, anything that consumes resources um, but does not work towards molding the final product. Um, these are these are the elements that you really want to pinpoint in doing your time study and these are hopefully the elements that you can try to eliminate. There are two types of timing that we'll cover in this class. First we have flyback, also known as snapback timing. This is the same method as is used in races to keep track of times for multiple laps, which is done by using the split function. Cumulative, also known as continuous timing, is the method you will be using in lab. The cumulative method involves letting the stopwatch run all the way through the cycle, reading the watch at the break point of each element. The one negative to this method is that it requires a little bit of work to calculate elapsed element times. Okay, so here's an example of breaking down a simple task into work elements. As you can see, even the simple task of making a PB&J sandwich requires many steps. Work elements can also vary from person to person. For instance, in step two, if the peanut butter was located in a cupboard instead of the refrigerator, you would have had to break this up into two steps. Okay. So if you're still a little bit unsure of how to break up a task into different work elements, that's okay. We're going to be going over um, another example in class on Thursday. Um, the assignment I want you guys to bring in with you on Thursday is to please use the work element types listed at the beginning of this video and identify the type of work elements listed on this slide. 
Uh, please note that um, oftentimes multiple work elements apply to uh, one step. So it's okay if you have several types listed for each element.